All right, guys, welcome back to another video for Victorum Gaming. Today we're going to take a look at SPQR from Warlord Games, basically a skirmish game in uh, sort of the Ancients time period. Um, and uh, this is going to be the first of our series basically covering the different factions and just providing a quick overview and a review of what's available for them. Uh, there'll be other videos later that uh, dive into some other details on uh, tactics and stuff like that. But for now, this is just a sort of a quick faction overview. So we're going to start, kind of do this thing alphabetically, basically. So we're going to start with Athens. Um, um, so, as with um, basically all the factions, they give you a little bit of background on the history, which is cool. Basically, a map show you where it is if you're not quite sure where these things, uh, where these uh, peoples uh, lived. Uh, a little bit more on, again, society, all that fun stuff. Really cool history stuff. Um, but we're here for the gameplay. Um, so, um, in SPQR, you have um, options to get heroes, basically. Um, you don't necessarily have to take them, but um, they do uh, provide some powerful uh, abilities for you. And beyond that, uh, every sort of generic unit they call minions or unit of minions. So you basically got mounted ones and on foot. And then at the end of each list, you have um, uh, usually uh, one or more heroes. And then uh, for SPQR, it's really cool too, uh, especially because campaign uh, play is really emphasized. Um, each faction has uh, three uh, sort of themed missions uh, to go along with it too, in addition to the six regular ones. So that's a really cool feature. Really like that. So um, we'll start off here and we'll kind of just take it uh, from the top. So uh, Athens does have a special rule. Greeks weren't necessarily known for their archery, but um, so they have this special rule, mediocre archery. Uh, the Greeks were not renowned for the prowess of their archers compared to those of other nations. If an Athenian unit does not take a special action to kneel and aim with a bow before a shoot action, it will suffer minus one penalty to its range attacks. So again, uh, pretty much with all the Greek units as well, or Greek armies and forces as we'll see, I'm not counting really Macedonia in this right now, um, but um, you know uh, they're not so much known for that. It's really... Um, tons and tons of hoplite units uh, with some other um, sort of more skirmisher units and stuff like that. Athens is a little bit more diverse, though, as we'll see. Um, so we'll kind of get through these units here and we'll kind of uh, explain some more things. So we'll start with the hero, and Athens is kind of spoiled on sort of the hero upgrade options. So uh, pretty generic stat line across the top. So move six, uh, plus one to his ranged. Again, in SPQR, you basically need to roll a six. Um, to uh, sort of do anything, so the pluses to that are basically the pluses to your roll. So range plus one, basically hitting on fives. Uh, melee plus two, two melee dice, agility, bravery is really good on this. Uh, no armor because you got to buy that. Um, and two wounds, all for 50 denarii. Um, all the points in this game basically run off denarii, um, which is really cool too. It makes more sense uh, when we go over the um, campaign play. But um, pretty, um, you know, generic stat line there, although I think the bravery is a little bit higher um, than some of the other forces out there. But again, you're really spoiled for choices here, so he doesn't really come with anything at all. Um, you can kind of mix and match and customize to your heart's content. So you got pretty standard stuff here, large shields, linothorax is more of a Greek style armor, but you got cuirass as well, super heavy armor, basically building up a tank there, but it slows your movement uh, uh, even more than the linothorax would. Um, helmet if you want to go a little bit lighter. Uh, but you can't combine different uh, armors in this game, so you, even though it doesn't necessarily make sense uh, the way it's written here, but like if you buy a line of thorax, it's considered to include some sort of helmet basically to represent that extra protection. But if you really just want very light protection, you go with a helmet, and then that doesn't impede your movement. Uh, you can get uh, the Greeks have this upgrade option for arrow aprons, basically a little bit more defense versus missiles. Um, a long spear, um, probably one of the most common uh, purchases here for the hero, if you're, especially if you're leading a hoplite unit. Um, you got daggers, really um, not all that great, to be honest. Um, seems like it'd be kind of wasted on a hero. Sword is probably the most generic option, too. Um, gives you the ability to parry. Um, bow, if you're trying to build up a ranged Greek hero, but um, that's not so much what the Greeks are about. Um, uh, bows are pretty decent, though. Slings are really cool in this game, really long range. Um, but again, um, you'd really have to like kind of custom build the hero to be more of a ranged hero. But we'll get into that in our other videos where we talk about talents. Um, javelins as well. Um, again, that's more of a light sort of skirmisher weapon. So if you're tailoring a hero for that, then great. But if you're kind of like building a melee um, guy, um, it really just makes sense to stick to sort of the hand-to-hand -hand stuff and some armor. Um, also, uh, you can mount them on a horse for 40 uh, denarii as well. Speaking of horses, uh, first Greek unit that we have here... Uh, cavalrymen, so fairly cheap. These are kind of uh, 
uh, a light to medium type cavalry, so not really skirmisher cavalry, but um, not really heavy either, like some of the uh, Macedonian like uh, cataphract units and stuff like that that you see in other factions. So, but 18 denarii gets you a move of six, range one, um, only melee plus one. Um, honestly, not that great. Two melee dice apiece, though, really good. Bravery is decent. Um, already with plus one armor, we'll see that in a second. Uh, and two wounds again the horses basically give you an extra wound but they come with a horse and a long spear really decent you can put a cuirass on there which is nice um, then that really turns these guys into somewhat of tanks uh, any armor that the rider has doesn't actually slow the uh, movement speed down of the cavalry so um, if you can spare the points you can definitely make this a fairly heavy cavalry unit you can give them some javelins too um, again probably not good to mix that with the heavy armor um, if you want to build them more light and kind of harassing that's cool uh, for that um, and you can, uh, one model can purchase a horn, which basically gives uh, you once per game an extra action. Uh, basically every unit in the game gets to do two actions, so you can do like move and move, move and f uh, melee, melee and melee, stuff like that, but we'll cover that in another video. They do have a cool special ability though. Uh, cavalry men may use the hit and run rules um, uh, found on page 17, so basically um, you can come in, do some damage, and then have a chance to bounce out um, and uh, get away from them. So really, really neat stuff there. Um, moving on to sort of the mainstay units. Uh, again, Greeks aren't, aren't really known for their cavalry so much either, so um, you do have that option, though, a little bit with Athens, some archery and cavalry without having to dip necessarily into the mercenaries. We'll cover that later. Hoplites, your bread and butter, so 12 denarii apiece. Uh, again, move 6, range 1, 2 melee, plus 2 the melee here, 2 melee dice, solid bravery. No uh, armor as of yet um, because you get to purchase that. But they do come with large shields and long spears. Really cool there. Um, and do note, again, that the cavalry don't have any um, shield options either. So um, you're not certainly going to be parrying too much with them. Uh, but you can equip these guys fairly uh, well too. So you got, again, the linothorax and cuirass option or helmets if you want to go a little bit lighter. The arrow options, uh, sorry, the arrow aprons. Um, swords as well. Um, and really, um, sometimes uh, the swords are just really good uh, in addition to the spears um, for that uh, extra parry but again the points do add up pretty quickly here and uh, and again one model may purchase a horn here so um, all these hoplite units for the various Greeks um, do have the phalanx rule which is really cool um, basically bumps your armor up slows you down a little bit um, and you're kind of more restricted in your movement options but there are abilities that you can grant your heroes via the talents that can uh, definitely make your phalanx units more maneuverable but Hoplites are going to be your bread and butter, and Athens does pretty well there. Moving on, so we talked about that archery rule at the beginning. Here we have the archers for them. And again, if you don't want to dip into the mercenary uh, options, uh, especially like in a campaign or something like that, and have to basically pay that mercenary tax, um, archers are not a bad choice here. Ten points apiece to start out with. Uh, only range plus one. Again, they are not great. So, and, and as we remember from the mediocre archery rule, you're probably going to want to get them in a spot where they can then spend an action to do that special uh, or the, the kneel uh, special uh, action and then shoot just so you're not getting uh, another ranged penalty basically. Um, only plus one in melee as you'd expect. These guys are not hand-to-hand -hand fighters. One melee dice. Uh, solid bravery though. Um, no armor of course. Uh, they come with the bow. Um, you can give them some leather armor or bronze helmets though um, for only two points or two denarii. Not really that expensive um, so you could kind of maybe turn these guys into some light um, sort of flanking skirmish type fighters. Um, but again, chances are if these guys are getting into combat, they are not going to last long. Uh, you can give them daggers too, um, otherwise they're just using their fists, but that seems like wasted points. Swords, if you can spare it, I mean, gives them a parry, so that's you know some survivability, almost as good as armor. Um, but uh, again, I feel like just keeping these guys basic, 10 points a piece and just getting more, um, the more dice you throw, the more arrows you throw, I think that's better. Um, and Athens does have this other cool rule down here. So uh, the archers of Athens had better training than most Greeks with the bow. They do not suffer from the mediocre mediocre archery rule. However, an Athenian warband may never have more units of archers than it has hoplites, so there is a caveat to that. Okay, moving on, then we get to the sort of light skirmisher units. So we have the Peltists, um, so basically uh, javelin throwing units. Uh, fairly cheap, seven, seven denarii to start with. Range plus two, these guys are really good if you can get them close and throw those javelins. Uh, only melee, plus one, and one dice, of course. Uh, they do have plus one agility though, which can get them into re some really sneaky positions. 
Bravery plus, uh, plus one, no armor, of course, really. Uh, wounds, uh, one as you expect. Come with a javelin and a small shield so they can deflect some incoming ranged fire, too. Um, you can give them even more javelins because, again, these are finite um, uh, as far as ammo goes. So you definitely want to maybe spend, give them at least a second one. Otherwise, they're going to basically be left with their fists to fight. Uh, you can, if you want to, spend some points to get some, give them a little bit of armor. But, again, I feel like that's just wasted. Just get more peltists. Um, swords could be an option there, um, just uh, sort of as a backup for when the javelins run out. Um, maybe they can then cl sort of clean up what's left uh, if you have a, a ton of these guys floating around. And they do have the option to get a horn too. And they have this really cool hit and run rule, just like you saw with the cavalry. So um, they can kind of charge in and finish up on things. The last sort of generic unit that we have here is called the Siloy or Siloy. Um, these guys only four a piece. Um, and basically these are, as it says in the description here, drawn from the poorest citizens of Athens. So these are kind of like your um, cannon fodder. Um, range plus one, melee plus one, one melee dice, only one bravery, um, no armor, no agility. These guys come with daggers and stones, so um, not really that great. But um, they do have some interesting upgrade options that you can take in different ways. So you could switch them out for bows, and then you have kind of these... Um, they are mediocre archers. They don't have this other rule that the regular archers have. But for six points, you do get a bow. So if you can get a big unit of these and get them in position, do the kneel special action, then shoot, they're not bad. Um, you can also turn these guys into sort of um, like peltists and give them up to three javelins for a pretty good discount. For seven points, you've got these guys rocking with three javelins. That's not terrible. Um, and you can replace the stones with slings too, which is really cool. Um, that does not um, have anything to do with the archer rule. So um, for eight points, you have uh, you know a 30-inch range. Um, you're only going to be shooting once a turn because of how the slings work in this game, but um, that is something to consider. Swords seem like a kind of a waste here. Um, they're not really going to do much. And uh, you can give them some animal skins and bucklers, though, if you want to go that route and kind of transform them into like a little pseudo melee uh, flanking unit um, but again the, the points add up there so nine points for that um, they also do have that hit and run rule which is really cool so again there's there's a lot of tinkering you can do with that um, they're not they're certainly not a useless unit but you do have to put some thought into how you're going to use them so that is the basic units that Athen has so you have basically a cavalry option your standard uh, hoplite option um, and then basically three different ranged options too. So it's fairly diverse as far as uh, the Greeks go. Um, again, not really great at cavalry or archery per se, but um, your, your hoplites again are your bread and butter. But that's where mercenaries come in. So um, if we're running like a tournament or something like that, um, that, those can be an option to sort of shore up some of the weaknesses that the Greeks have. Um, but in a campaign, again, you're also paying that extra tax. Um, so uh, some things to consider. But Athens can basically take itself as mercenaries, um, Macedonians, uh, Thebes, and uh, oddly enough to Sparta. So um, for the most part, that's just more of the same. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, Macedonians do give you some diversity there too. And there's some interesting themes that you could probably do as far as painting and um, displays and all that. Now, the sort of true mercenaries uh, that we'll cover separately in a video, um, if you really want some awesome archers, the Cretan archers are basically the best of the best. Um, you can have sort of generic mercenary hoplites. Um, Thessalian cavalry are fairly good. Um, more of a skirmisher type cavalry. Thracian peltists and Thracian warriors, again, gives you a little bit uh, sort of like the best uh, of the peltists and some solid warriors too. But um, again, we'll cover that in a separate video. Uh, mercenaries are always an interesting addition too. And then we come on to the heroes. So uh, as I said at the beginning, most factions have uh, at least one or two or more heroes. Um, so the first one is Cleon. Um, and again, these are basically special characters named heroes. So you can see the points cost reflects that too. So 220 denarii for Cleon, only a move of five. He's a level seven hero. And again, you do level up your heroes in this game via campaigns and stuff like that. Um, but uh, tournament play, there's uh, several ways of doing, going about that too. Only range one, but he's melee plus three. So basically plus three to your rolls. Uh, throws three melee dice when he's fighting. Only agility one. Bravery's four, though, really good. He's not going to really run away. Armor's plus two, five wounds on the guy. 
Comes with several talents, which we'll run over real quick. He's got About Face, Dirty Fighting, Divine Luck, Inspire, Heroic Rush, Mighty Blow, Pushback, and Voice of Command. And then his equipment, he's got a Large Shield, Line of Thorax, Long Spear, and Sword. So he's fairly kitted out for close combat. Um, and he's really more of the offensive of the two uh, heroes here. Um, so About Face basically lets you uh, uh, change a Phalanx is facing uh, for... Um, doing it much easier than uh, it would be without that ability, basically. Um, takes care of some of the downsides to that. Um, dirty Fighting basically lets you knock down opposing heroes, so that can be really deadly. Divine Luck gives you basically a reroll once per game. Um, what else we got? Inspire, basically units within 12 can reroll their morale. Uh, Heroic Rush, once per game, basically gets three actions instead of two. Um, Mighty Blow, you basically sacrifice all your attacks. You get one attack, but it does triple wounds and can also knock down. Um, rush, um, uh, or sorry, not rush back, uh, push back. Basically, uh, it's a fairly complicated ability, but basically you can push the enemy unit back an inch, you follow up with um, an attack, and they don't get to use uh, shields to parry um, for that next attack, which really, uh, if, you're, if you roll hot, that can really cut um, down their numbers. Um, and then Voice of Command is plus one bravery um, and sort of a six inch bubble, but doesn't apply to himself. Uh, he does have, come with a pretty cool special ability too. Lay down your shields. If Cleon is leading a friendly uh, unit that numbers in a, outnumbers an enemy unit within 12 and no other enemy units are within 12 of that unit, he may order the enemy unit to surrender with a special action. The enemy unit must make a bravery check. If it fails, it lays down its arms and leaves the battlefield, remove that unit uh, immediately. So that can actually uh, be really cool when that happens. Um, so he's definitely good if you're building an infantry list. Again, he wants to be in with the hoplites and phalanxes and stuff like that. Um, that's where he shines, and he's definitely no slouch in close combat either. He can definitely take out enemy heroes. The other guy that most people might be a little bit more familiar with, Themistocles, a um, little bit cheaper. He's only a level 5 hero, um, 150 denarii, plus 1 range, plus 3 melee, only 2 dice, though, uh, uh, per melee action, uh, plus two agility, solid bravery at plus three, plus two armor, and five wounds. Um, so this is a guy you know from uh, Battle of Marathon and then Salamis. Um, he's got some slightly different abilities. He's got Battlefield Control, Motivation, Shield Bash, Shield of Steel, Shield Wall, and Voice of Command. So he's a little bit more of a defensive fighter. Um, but he, he can still actually pump out some damage. Um, large Shield, Line of Thorax, Long Spear, and Sword. Again, pretty basic equipment. So his uh, talents there, Battlefield Control, basically um, fairly lengthy uh, ability, but um, you can basically not have to worry about sort of will to what they call will to fight checks. Basically, your army won't really want to run away if you don't want it to. Um, so you can basically fight to the last man. Um, motivation, um, basically you can give a unit uh, plus one action within 12. Um, if that unit hasn't activated already, which can be really deadly, um, you can do all kinds of neat little maneuvers with that. Shield Bash, basically um, it's an attack dep uh, depending on the size of the shield you got. He's got the large shield. So you can cause some serious damage and also knock your enemy down and they can't actually parry that attack. Really cool, but it's only one attack for that. Um, he has that Shield of Steel ability too. Um, basically a plus one parry versus ranged, so he's going to be harder to pick off with ranged attacks. Um, shield, uh, shield Wall uh, basically gives him plus one armor but minus one melee until the next phase, so he kind of castles up. Uh, and then last, Voice of Command, as we saw with um, Cleon, plus one bravery, uh, sort of in a six-inch bubble, but not to himself. Uh, and he also comes with his own special rule, so um, Th uh, Themistocles knew how, just how to enrage an enemy, often to their detriment. As a special um, action, Themistocles uh, may enrage enemy, any enemy hero within 12 and in line of sight. You do an opposed bravery check. If Themistocles is successful, the enemy hero must make uh, every attempt to attack Themistocles. When performing melee actions to attack Themistocles, the hero will double his melee dice, but half his melee score rounding up. So gives him more uh, more um, dice to basically so uh, to roll against him, but um, halving his score rounding up. So that, um, you know, more dice, but maybe not hitting as often. So still a little bit risky. Um, definitely got to time that right, but um, gives you an ability to sort of like kite uh, enemy heroes over to you and force them to attack you instead of uh, other maybe more important things. And with all of his other uh, talents and stuff like that, um, 
uh, he should stick around for a while. Um, it would be nice if he had three melee dice, though, just to throw up that extra damage. But, um, again, he's more of a defensive fighter, too. But that basically wraps up Athens. So, as we were saying, it's a fairly diverse um, list for the Greeks. You get a little bit of everything, and um, you can really customize those generic heroes to do what you need. Um, again, we'll cover talents in a probably a series of separate videos, just because there are so many of them. But um, these two uh, named heroes are really cool as well. And, again, we'll cover the Athenian... Um, uh, specific missions also in a separate video. So um, hope you liked the video. Um, give us a like uh, if you did and maybe a subscription and uh, stay tuned for a whole lot more uh, SPQR content. This is a fantastic uh, skirmish game for the ancients, um, ancient time period basically um, uh, from Warlord Games. And um, yeah, and we'll uh, stay tuned for more videos and uh, have a nice day.